I'm Joe Kane. I'm Dan Kane. I'm Sal Kanka. And I'm Wayne Heckler. And this is The Imperfect Podcast. Don't forget to check us out at hecklerkane.com and everywhere on social media. To the bumper. So today we're here with Clint Harrington, mastermind behind the well-known film blog, clintington.com, where he discusses everything film. He's a social worker at large for those that have a voice, author and creator of Growing Up Movies, and like we said, blogger of Clintington on film. Hey, Clint, how are you today? I am very good. Awesome. Thanks very for good. Thanks for uh, doing this with us and, and hanging out. And Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Seriously, it's, it's an honor, and you guys are tip top and i'm i'm just so thankful to have the opportunity cool man well we've we've noticed obviously what you've been doing your blog is you know blown up obviously i'd say i mean how long how long have you been doing the blog uh, about two years now i started in january i think um 14 is when i officially started cool and what made you do this what made you do the site so um i always I always wanted to be a writer growing up. Um, I wanted to be Stephen King growing <laughs> up, actually. Um, who doesn't, right? right. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I really was taken by uh, the story The Body, which, as we all know and love, Stand By Me. Sure. Um, and that, that really spoke to me because he, he was writing about a character around my age, the first time I read it, that wanted to be a writer. And um, so... I always I always had the writer in me and then of course as all of us are well aware of life kind of happens <laughs> and um, You start getting into these different responsibilities and, and doing these different things and um, There was a time where writing kind of got away from me out of my life and um, You know it was unfortunate, but social media Twitter in particular um, was a big a big help um, I, I ran into a lot, a number of different awesome people on Twitter, and there was this one in particular. His name's Nat Russo. He's an independent author, and um, he has a blog that's about how to become an independent author, basically. And I just started reading that, and, and a big part of it was, and the most important part um, that I took from it was that if you're going to start a blog and try and develop a platform, you have to write about things that you love. You have to have a passion behind the things that you love. And I, I got to tell you guys, I, I love movies. I love <laughs> movies. Like, there, there's nothing greater to me. I mean, I have a son now, so I kind of, I have to say that, right? I <laughs> <Yeah. child. laughs> I do. But I mean, like, right up there, like one B behind my son is is movies like it, there's no <laughs> doubt about it it's it, it always has been and and for those of you that have read it like you know like that, that's that's what our family did together um so movies are just huge and i guess one of the benefits of, of having a son now you get to show him all the movies that you love so you get to watch them all and have a great excuse to do it right <laughs> yes and and like he was maybe two months, it was two months in the pregnancy and I'm already thinking, okay, when can I show him E.T.? Like when, <laughs> when can, when can we watch, when can we watch, uh, the trilogy? When can we, when, when can we see, I'm probably going to have to wait on the Godfather a little bit, but not right. too long. <laughs> it, it's changing, you know, just like, uh, that's, that's one of the first things that I ever thought of when I was thinking about having a child is like, how excited I was to relive some of those with him again. And we've seen E.T. We watched cool. E.T. He loves it. You know, he's four years old, loves E.T. Cool. That's awesome. I saw on the cover of your book you have uh, in, in the, the O on top, you have the little E.T. symbol going up there. So, <laughs> Hey, let me hear yeah. some of the movies that he has watched with you. Keep going. I'm curious. Uh, How about well, Goonies, maybe? One of those? He, or? Has, he yeah. hasn't seen Goonies yet. He yeah. will. <laughs> um, but I, I kind of wanted to wait on Goonies until he kind of had um, a bigger group of friends. Okay. Mm. Uh, you know, so yes. that he can kind of experience like, oh, yeah, it would be really cool if my friends and I, you know. Because he, he's yeah. kind of, and that's not to say he doesn't have friends. It's just, that he, you know, he's kind of in that young stage where everybody's his friend for a little bit. And <laughs> friendships are like four seconds long and then it's off to someone else. Each movie. So I kind of want to wait until he had like a group, you know what I mean? Each movie is time sensitive, exactly. It has to be the right yeah. age group for each movie. 
Yeah, and I've kind of got like mapped out. Like, oh, I think I think this one will work at this age, you know, and that kind of stuff. It's kind of sad. I hope he likes movies as much as I do. Uh, like, just out of curiosity, how old is he? He's four years old. <laughs> I, okay. I have a four-year-old son too, and I, I've been I've been having the um, Star Wars debate with my wife, trying to figure out when is the appropriate time to start him on that original trilogy. <laughs> hey, yeah. tell me about some of the movies that you love so much. I want to hear details. What do you really love? You say you love movies. What in particular? Which ones? <laughs> oh man, I love to quote Mel Brooks when I'm asked about like my favorite movies. I tell people I love like 6,000 movies like mm -hmm. I you know but there are some there are some more than others though obviously and I, w I always think of the movies that impacted me you know and Ghostbusters was that first movie really <laughs> when I was growing up that was like I finally was allowed to be an adult like mm -hmm. I, I, I I really wanted to see Ghostbusters and my parents I come from a pretty conservative town okay. and and my parents are pretty like yeah, I don't know. Should we let them watch it? And there's some adult stuff in there, you know. And and they they finally came around and let me. And like, I, there there was. It's hard to match, you know, what that was for me the first time to see an adult movie. Like, it's not really an adult movie, nah. but for me it was. And like, like the just the the joy and the creativity of that movie. When Ghostbusters came out, there was nothing like that. Nothing. You have the science fiction, and you have the like ghosts and the ghouls, and you have, you know, you have Bill Murray. I love Bill Murray, yeah. and and he's just so like, he he can make a movie just by, you know, <laughs> just showing up and and making faces. Well, that, he doesn't whole, even... <laughs> that whole film is iconic for a reason, right? I mean, you know, it just goes back to it. so i gotta ask because we've talked about it a couple times on here what did you think about the ghostbusters reboot did you watch it did you not watch it i did watch it um <laughs> and, I, and i'll say this like i went in because ghostbusters is so important to me i went in kind of with an attitude of like um it's it just can't be what the original was and it's kind of unfair to expect it to mm-hmm so I, I just went in with the attitude of like, you know what? If they give me some good laughs, I'm, I'm going to be okay with it. And, mm -hmm. and they did, it, you know? And it wasn't, it wasn't even close to what the original could be. And it's unfair, I think, to try and expect it to be. And, and I think, you know, for the, the few good laughs that you do get out of it, just kind of enjoy it for that. And, and it is what it is. I got to see it with my nephews. They loved it. And they, and they had seen the original. Um, but but they loved it. They thought it was great. Cool. So, yeah. Did we, you guys get a chance to see it? None of us have. None seen None of us it. have seen it, but we've all keep ranking on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't rank on. I really didn't give it a fair chance. Yet, so well, I'm, I'm I, always open, really. You I know? think Sal's been the most harsh on. I, it. Yeah, I've been pretty harsh. I, I'm not a fan of the cast. I just uh, a lot of them. I just don't think they're that funny. I, I've seen them. Yeah. There's too many comedic movies that have been released in the recent years that it's kind of like that they're like all in the same club and they're all telling the same inside joke that we don't really get and you know it's just it's not made for it's not made for the masses anymore in some regards you know they've they've lost that kind of like general humor and I, or maybe it's just me me i'm getting old i don't well, know we're, we're, <laughs> we're also pretty sure by the box office flop that it turned out to be that they're not going to make a sequel of this series so yeah. no no, and and you know I'm I'm kind of okay with that because for me it's like they gave it a shot. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, um, but I'm kind of glad it didn't do that well. So I don't have to try and convince myself to go to another one. Honestly, hey, you're definitely gonna get a chance to hear us after we all watch Ghostbusters now. <laughs> now we all have to. We'll do another podcast on that yeah, right. once we finally give it a fair chance. Yes. <laughs> we we have we have ripped apart Ghostbusters in at least four or five different podcasts <laughs> in different ways and now that now this one also it just happens to keep yeah. coming up hey one thing i did love about the first ghostbusters was the, was the manifestation it actually taught you like think of this and what they think the stay puffed marshmallow man you know that was a deep type of thought because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like you used yeah. uh, your own inner thoughts to you know create <laughs> something against you so i thought that was a good twist yeah for something sure. good yeah. and, and like, it's it's so quotable like it's just <laughs> There, there are so many. You can just stop and think about like ten to fifteen lines that that you'll just you'll just start smiling. 
You just yeah. think of them and you're just like, I'm just smiling. I'm thinking of Ghostbusters, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, we know you obviously like Ghostbusters, but uh, what what genre would you call your favorite genre? Oh, man. I See, I really like gangster movies, but a comedy would have to be in there just because of the amount of respect I have for people that attempt comedy. Comedy is so hard to do um, because cause I think we can all agree what's dramatic, you know? Sure. Like like it's it's kind of hard to mess up drama or horror you know because we can all agree what's like scary or dramatic you know a child getting murdered is dramatic you know we yeah. can all kind of agree that that's that's a that's a touching kind of concept but but like comedy is is taste oriented and mm -hmm. and people have different levels of of the kind of comedy they like and and Certain people will laugh at certain things, but they, you say the F word and I can't laugh at that. That's my family. Like, they don't like the F word. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I love the F word. <laughs> we love but, it. Feel free but, to like, use it anytime you want. We're not censored yeah. here. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but, like, comedy to me, like, taking that on and being good at it, like, and I don't think, and I, I'm, not a, I'm not a huge awards guy. I, I don't, I, I don't, the, the Academy doesn't hold shit for me, like, I think it's it's just a suck fest, but um, we we don't give comedy its due. I and I think part of it is because we just don't to tend not to take it seriously because it makes us giggle, and it, it's true art when it's when it's performed correctly. So like I have mad respect for people that that are good at comedy. Kevin Kevin Smith is one of my favorite. Favorite, oh, did so. you see that they're they're making a documentary about uh, clerks called Shooting Clerks? Did you see that that that's coming? No, but uh -huh. that's well, amazing. that's coming. You gotta, you <laughs> that's gotta, something I'm excited about. You gotta pay closer attention to our Twitter feed, man. I gotta, you know, <laughs> like, what am I doing? Man. Um, yeah, they just <laughs> they just announced it. So that's kind of cool. Great, yeah. I know. So you mentioned you're a comedy fan, and I think you you, you mentioned Mel Brooks before. So was he? Is he like your big comedic hero? Is Mel Brooks? Uh, he's one Mel of Brooks them. Mel Brooks movies, for sure. Um, Blazing Saddles is my favorite. Uh, my favorite Mel Brooks uh, movie. But I mean, he has so many. And and the thing about Mel is like, you can watch Mel when you're young and and laugh at kind of the slapstick kind of goofy stuff, and the adults can watch it along with the kids too and just laugh at stuff. You know, you have the kids turn around going. Why is Dad laughing at that one? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a, right. a different level of mean? humor. Right. Yeah. yeah. Level of and humor. so like, everybody loves a good fart joke sitting around the fire eating beans, you know. But <laughs> <laughs> not getting really right. right. <laughs> but but then then there's you know things like land, sea, snatch. Like that's like that's right. just a whole other level. <laughs> right. Right. Of just greatness, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I love Harvey Corman. You know the shit kicker you know it's, it's just all that good stuff you know um but yeah i i love silent movie uh young frankenstein you know mel brooks i like blake edwards um blake Ed edwards was a great comedic director i like i like old stuff too. frank capra is a great comedic sure. director um you know there's just a number of them howard hawks um oh wait not howard hawks who am i thinking of the guy did bringing up baby was that Howard Hawks? I can't remember. I don't know. I'm getting old. <laughs> yeah, we all are. Um, We're all kind of silent. I guess we passed that one. We're like, uh. we, don't, we don't know. <laughs> bringing up babies. That yeah. the Catherine Hepburn one. Yes, for yes. sure. Yeah. Yeah, Catherine Hepburn. And... See, Wayne knows his I stuff. I know. How... Yeah. Maybe not. I can't remember. But anyways, yeah, like comedy, comedy. I just have such respect for people that are able to do it. And Mel Brooks, like he was able to do it time and time again. Yeah. And, yeah, look at and look he, at any you know, any of his things. The producers, Young Frankenstein, all of those things. It's like absolutely priceless. Definitely. Yeah, and to be able to be able to make them differently, you know, like he doesn't use the same gags over and over, and and it's all creative. And the talent that he was able to get um, in his movies was great too. You know. Yeah, for sure. So, what was your upbringing like? You mentioned your parents a few times, and so where'd you where'd you grow up? Uh, I grew up in, uh, I call it Mormonville, USA. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, southeast Idaho, and it's it's land of the Mormons. Uh, there's a lot of, 
a lot of LDS folks in Southeast Idaho. And so it's, as you can imagine, very religious, very conservative. Mm -hmm. And we, we grew up Lutheran. So we were kind of like the rebels, the rebels of the town. Like (laughs) there's the Lutheran, there's that Lutheran family over there, you know? (laughs) And, and so, um, it, it was, it was, it was very easy for us to kind of be outlandish because we were, we wanted to be everything opposite of Mormon. So like, you know, which, which kind of led to, um, underage drinking every now and then <laughs> and, and those kinds of things. Sure. <laughs> and yeah. And my parents were the kind of people that were kind of like, Hey, I'd rather know where you are doing that than, than elsewhere. Um, so you, you keep it under wraps and don't bring over too many, but like, you know, so they were cooler than you let on before. I get it. They just wouldn't let you yeah. see Ghostbusters. You just couldn't see Ghostbusters. <laughs> Drink all the beer you want. No Ghostbusters though. Yeah. yeah, you know, I used to, I, I, I was, I used to give them so much crap about that, like how conservative they were, and, and that's another good thing about blogging is like you, you it brings back all these memories, and you realize like they weren't that bad. <laughs> Like yeah. they, they let me see a lot of things probably earlier than I should have. I think I saw Jaws at eight. <laughs> um, oh wow! Yeah, did you go when you want to necessarily see that young? But did you go yeah. into the beach well, after that or what? Yeah. I don't, well, that's and that's the thing. There's not a lot of beaches in Idaho, so I was okay. <laughs> you were safe, right? <laughs> yeah. Are well, you still but, in? Are yeah. you still in Idaho then, or? Yeah, I'm in Boise. Yeah. Cool. I hear it's booming Boise. there, like now. Idaho is like kind of like a spot, like. A lot yeah, of tech companies yeah. are moving in and yeah and and i man i love it i want more and more people to come out here we have a lot of like we, we've had an attitude and when i say we i mean the state of idaho i speak for everybody <laughs> um <laughs> we we've had a lot of people that through the years are like man i, I we don't want anyone to know how wonderful it is over here we kind of want them to stay out and i'm not like that like I, the more the merrier come on in like you know, bring in business, bring in people, bring in different cultures. It's a lot of white people over here. We need to bring in some diversity. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Hey, there's one question I like to ask all film connoisseurs. Um, where does My Cousin Vinny rank for you? Because to me, I think that's like a masterpiece. <laughs> uh, my Cousin Vinny is, I I want you to know that's going to show up on my blog. <laughs> <laughs> And if it's on my blog, I liked it. Um, but I have a great, I got to tell you, the gentleman who played Herman Munster and the judge, um, yeah. um, his name is escaping Fred, me. Fred, Fred Gwynn. Gwyn. Fred Gwynn. That is one of the greatest performances by a supporting actor that I have seen in a long, and so memorable. And yep. Every the southern line. Charm, yeah, the southern charm he puts on and his ability to be a straight man across from Joe Pesci, who's trying to keep it together, I I I love I love my cousin Vinny. It's it's one of those, and I hate it when people always always do the thing about like Jack Palance being crazy about giving Marissa Tomei the Academy Award or whatever. She earned that damn award. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. 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 Yep. It's it's one of the best performances in decades for me. Yes. Um. From, from from a woman of that nature and yeah. I mean and I mean Marissa Tomei is smoking hot anyway right? absolutely I mean, still I mean still absolutely. Yeah. still and their chemistry yeah. on 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 screen was awesome too Pesci and Tomei yeah so yeah it's amazing and you know I love it when Pesci goes against type like in JFK my cousin Vinny Lethal Weapon two yeah Lethal oh Weapon yeah two Joe Pesci and Lethal Weapon two I mean. Th- they don't have an Academy Award for how good that performance was. <laughs> he stole the show across from Glover and and Gibson. He stole the show. Yeah. Every scene he's in, you're like, I can't wait for Pesci to get back into the scene. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, 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 I'd, I'd agree with that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love all your even movie memorabilia that you have there. You have your Save Ferris shirt on, and you have your Star Wars mug you're sipping out of. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you, well, you, you okay, live, you poster. live your life. <laughs> yeah, so I love, I love it because as you can see, the top's black. Yeah. When it's hot, the lightsabers turn on. Oh, <laughs> that is cool. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I bet your kids love that one. <laughs> oh, he loves it. And what's great is like 
for me in the morning, because I'm not much of a morning person, but that mug always puts me in a great mood. I'm like, I, I get to see the lights come on today, you know? Nice. I can't see. What's the poster behind you? I can't make it, it out. looks like Godfather. Uh, it's Godfather. Oh, that's Dan's movie. Yeah, Dan, Dan, Dan picked Dan's it the out. He saw guy. that poster back there. Yep. Dan had it. <laughs> yeah, that is my favorite movie. So. Yeah, yes. Um, I, I would say Ghostbusters is 1A and The Godfather is 1B for me. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. Nice. You're you're talking to the right crowd. Yeah, because we were we were talking we were talking about impactful movies. Mm-hmm. God Godfather's definitely impactful, because for me, it, it's one of those movies that's so good and it's so captivating because you'll be watching it and it seems like there's just not a lot going on in bits and pieces, but you're glued. You're just drawn into that massive story that they have yep. and all the different characters it's it's game of thrones before game of thrones like you just have all these different pieces and 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 all this political intrigue amongst that that um lifestyle and environment and and uh, i mean and it's one of my favorite books have you guys all read the book yes i've I i've read part ones. part of it like 12 times yeah, you couldn't get through. You couldn't get through it. <laughs> no, it wasn't that. I, 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 it just, it's, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was not good. I just, uh, <laughs> it's lack of attention. Span, I, it, I think, yeah, that's that's else. a big problem. But I need to own it because that that library thing get puts me under the gun. I know uh, it has to go back. <laughs> he had to return it. <laughs> oh man. Hey so. Clint. So, um, do you do your own screenwriting also? Uh, I have written one screenplay. Yes, I um. I'm I'm putting out a novel um, in November. Okay. Yep. And basically, what I did was I, I wrote a screenplay, and I couldn't I couldn't find anyone to make it, and didn't think it would ever get made. So I converted it into my novel that's coming out in November. What's the screenplay and the novel? What's the novel about? Um, the guy who loves movies. We need to know what movie you would write. That's right. Oh, what movie I would write? Well, you're probably gonna laugh at this, but it's kind of a—I wouldn't say it's a romantic comedy, but it's a—it's um, kind of a, a coming of age for like a new adult. It's—I um, um, I tell people all the time, it's about college relationship angst. You know, um, there, there's there's the lead character is um, a guy who has been with the same woman for about seven years and then she ups and leaves um, right before they're about to graduate and um, she's just out of his life like that and he's kind of like coming to terms with how to move on um, and those kinds of things so it's it, it's it's about loss um, the the title of the novel is called get back um, and so it's it's kind of this story about how he's going to get back um, on with his life basically and get, nice. get Back is getting released pretty soon, right? The, the... Uh, yeah, it'll be out in November. Um, I can't – I, I want to have it out kind of early in November so that um, on uh, Cyber Monday I can put, put a little bit of a rebate on it for people. I have the compilation of the blog out already on uh, – it's uh, called Growing Up Movies. Mm -hmm. is, so what is uh, that? Is that all of your blog posts just – in book form yeah basically but yeah it's a compilation of the blog and i wanted to to make because the blog's free i wanted to make the book free but amazon amazon won't let you do it for free so mm. i'm trying to to get it free i have it free on kobo so i'm going to try and uh, there's a way in which you can kind of let amazon know how to get it on there for free because i feel bad charging people for something that's free on my blog sure um, so yeah and, and it's so kind how of many... just a way to advertise my writing and stuff yeah, which is a great vehicle. I mean, it's a, one of the ways that a lot of writers do that, right? They have a blog, and they were able to now – you can create these ebooks or digital books or downloadable books and uh, put out all your content. How many movies are in there? How many blog posts are we talking about? I think I have like a, between 100 and 110 total, but I, I stopped at 89 um, and, and did, just did the, the 80s and, and some earlier stuff like Butch Cassidy and – and those kinds of things that I watched with with my parents, but I, I I kept it to the 80s, and then I'm planning on on doing the 90s, and um, that one would be called Growing Into Movies. Nice. Um, when when I get through that, because that that's kind of I was uh, 
I was 13, 14 in the early 90s, and then I, I later went into college um, through the 90s. And now, guys, don't get me wrong. I love the 80s, but the 90s for me, like some of my movies <laughs> from that I have on my top 10 from the 90s, they'll they'll always be in my top 10. Like so many, I probably have five movies. Um, that I that I just watch over and over again that were from the '90s. I mean, Pulp Fiction was mm. in '94, yep. and I mean that that movie changed everything for me. Well, let, let me ask you a little bit. Uh, you have your site up and running. You have everything going. You're you have a regular blog that you're putting out pretty regularly. Um, are you what is the are you making an income off of this where you're sustaining yourself? Is this oh, your, is this not. this is your primary <laughs> job? Is what I'm asking. <laughs> No, absolutely not. No, I'm a, I'm a social worker by day. Um, I work with persons diagnosed with developmental disabilities. Wow. Um, that that puts the that puts the bread on the table. I uh, I would hope at some point my you know my goal is to eventually um, be be good enough. We'll and we'll see how it goes. This is going to be my first novel. So, uh, but eventually keep keep at it. Got to keep at it with the writing and eventually see how it works out. But for the, for right now, no, that's 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 just getting the the platform built. You know what I mean? True. Yeah, you're, yes. you're building using the blog to build your audience and create a fan base for yourself, and which is which is smart. And, it's great. Uh, you know. Yeah, Tarantino and Scorsese, in terms of like being able to put popular music to 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 film, it, they're the best. Those yes. two are just, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's great. Yeah, I'd say I'd say Scorsese is probably the best. Yeah, and he started right away, right, when in his first movie doing that. He was yeah. one of the pioneers of doing modern music. Yeah, was it Mean Streets? Yeah, well, Mean Streets. I think mean he Street. had, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, Jumpin' Jack Flash in Mean yeah. Streets, and and when uh, De Niro walks in. With, uh, yes. and walks up to Harvey Keitel. So, and then he used the Stones a lot, but yeah. I think that was in that one. Yeah, my favorite, my favorite is uh, the beginning of the Departed, Jack Nicholson's monologue, the VO. Oh, during Gimme Shelter. To Gimme Shelter. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I watch that. I get chills listening to Jack. I mean, yeah. That that movie. What's crazy about that movie? I mean, you list off the cast, and you're like, okay, Martin Sheen, uh, Mark Wahlberg, uh, Matt Damon, Leonardo DiCaprio. None of those guys are slouches at all, mm -hmm. right? I mean, those guys are great. Absolutely. Jack Nicholson owned everyone. Like, <laughs> when, when has he not been the best actor in a movie? Like, <laughs> I don't think it's possible. Like, mm. you know, it, it's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. and you just didn't see it coming. And, I mean, haunting, you know. Good stuff. Yeah, that, really scene, good stuff. that scene where he's questioning Leo's character about being a rat. Mm -hmm. And he just looks like he's losing his mind. <laughs> and then I'm nervous as a watcher. I'm like, oh, my God. what? How is he yeah, sitting no, in front I, of him? I, I was, uh, you guys did the top ten villains? Yes. Yeah. I, I was watching that, and I was I was surprised Jack on, on that movie didn't make the list. Mm. I thought for sure. That's true. I was, that, we may yeah. ha we may have to go revisit the top yeah, ten yeah, villains yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had to agree. We had to come to come a consensus, right? That might have been yeah, one of our battles. Only, Who yeah. knows? Yeah, there's only ten, right? I mean, right. Yeah. And there's a lot That's of good right. villains. Yeah. The yeah. problem is you root for a lot of them, so then oh, I yeah. almost didn't see Jack as a villain. <laughs> I'm like, oh, he's he's on my side. <laughs> you like him too he's, much. Yeah, he's still my favorite Joker. Yeah. Um, Nicholson's still my favorite Joker. I mean, he just, I don't know. There's, there's something about the, the, the enjoyment I got out of watching him do awful things to other people. And that, that might speak volumes about me. <laughs> and you're a social but worker. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it just, it, it, in order, it, you just have so many different emotions when you're watching a villain that you, you love, you know? For sure, and and Jack's one of those guys that you just like anyway because he's so cool. 
Right. Speaking yeah. of the Joker, though, how did you feel about uh, Jared Leto as the Joker? Did you see Suicide Squad? I know we kind of trampled all over that movie. No, you know, guys, I, I didn't watch Suicide Squad. I, I I heard enough. I was like, um, I can't go to that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you have to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> he saw our podcast and was like, I'm not seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were the ones that finally pushed me to the, like, okay, I can't do it. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> It'll be yeah. on Amazon for free in no time. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I know. I know. That's the thing. Like, it, it's going to have a short window there. Well, the And cool. the, the funny thing is, is, it probably did okay because there was, like, nothing else to go to, I didn't feel. Like, it right. yeah. wasn't anything that really jumped out at me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the good news is, I guess, the best thing about that movie was Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn, and yes, she yeah. just they just announced her. She's getting her own spinoff. So they oh, are good. they're gonna create a Harley Quinn. They just she just inked the deal. She's also gonna be a executive producer on it or something like that. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Cause cause like the the snippets that you see, like she seems captivating. She killed it. Um, yeah, she yeah, seems she, well. she seems like right on. And and the voice, her voice, the inflection she used was great. Mm -hmm. You know, it was um, a little Long Island Wolf of Wall Street for me, but it was it's there. It's 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 still awesome. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask. Do you have any uh, advice for anybody who would want to start a blog? Well, I, I mean, it kind of goes back to the original thing. Um, you have to love what you're writing about. Um, you you have that passion is going to be that fuel for you to keep going. And um, even even I have some nights where I'm like, ah, I don't know if I want to watch. I don't know if I want to write about that movie just yet. And it's kind of like, well, I'm trying to do these in order, but. Yeah, but it, it just, I'm not ready to do that one yet, you know? No. I, I held off on The Godfather for a long time because it had to be right. Mm -hmm. That 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 movie had to be right. But, like, Ghostbusters, I was like, I jumped in early on that <laughs> one. I, was, I went to, like, four. I was like, I'm doing it. I don't care. Like, I have to, I have to say this about this, you know? Like, <laughs> so you, you have to have... You have to have that love for whatever it is, and you should only blog about what you love, what you have the passion for, um, because it's going to keep you going. Because you, because you have to do a lot. If you want a good blog, you got to put out a lot of stuff. I sure. mean, that's been a theme, just I think, amongst our, all of our guests that we've had over the summer. Everybody that we've had has been so passionate, and you are as well, which is why you know we were happy to have you on here and really wanted to talk about your site and and really find out who you are and you know more about you and and give you a platform to talk about it so thanks for yeah. coming you know it was amazing we got to wrap this up today so uh i want to thank clint for uh sticking around with us and hanging and uh phoning in yeah. uh you can yeah. check out his uh books that are on amazon and kobo and then he's got a new book coming out in november we um, wish you future success in all your endeavors and thank you very much for joining us clint it was great thank meeting you, you. Great being able to talk oh, to you. Yes, it was nice to meet you guys. A pleasure. Thanks yeah. for having me on. Awesome. Great. Absolutely. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I like talking about movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
well-known film blog, Clintington.com, where he discusses everything film. He's a social worker at large for those that have a voice, author and creator of Growing Up movie- Movies, and like we said, blogger of Clintington on film. Hey, Clint, how are you today? I am very good. Awesome. Thanks very for good. Thanks for uh, doing this with us and, and hanging out. And, Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Seriously, it's it's an honor, and you guys are tip top, and I'm I'm just so thankful to have the opportunity. Cool, man. Well, we've we've noticed obviously what you've been doing. Your blog is you know blown up. Obviously, I'd say. I mean, how long how long have you been doing the blog? Uh, about two years now. I started in January. I think um, 14 is when I officially started. Cool. And what made you do this? What made you do the site? So, um, I always, I always wanted to be a writer growing up. Um, I wanted to be Stephen King growing <laughs> up, actually. Um, who doesn't, right? right. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I, I really was taken by uh, the story, The Body, which, as we all know and love, Stand by Me. Sure. Um, and that that really spoke to me because he he was writing about a character around my age the first time I read it that wanted to be a writer, and um, so I, I always I always had the writer in me. And then of course, as all of us are well aware of, life kind of happens, <laughs> and um, you start getting into these different responsibilities and and doing these different things. And um, there was a time where writing kind of got away from me out of my life. And, um, you know, it was unfortunate, but social media, Twitter in particular, um, was a big, a big help. Um, I, I ran into a lot, a number of different awesome people on Twitter and that, that you'll just, you'll just start smiling. You just yeah. think of them and you're just like, I'm just smiling. I'm thinking of Ghostbusters, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. we know you obviously like Ghostbusters, but, uh, what, what genre would you call your favorite genre? Oh man, I see. I really like gangster movies, but a comedy would have to be in there just because of the amount of respect I have for people that attempt comedy. Comedy is so hard to do um, because because I think we can all agree what's dramatic, you know? Sure. Like like it's it's kind of hard to mess up drama or horror, you know, because. We can all agree what's like scary or dramatic. You know, a child getting murdered is dramatic. You know, we yeah. can all kind of agree that that's that's a that's a touching kind of concept. But but like comedy is is taste oriented, and mm-hmm. and people have different levels of of the kind of comedy they like, and and certain people will laugh at certain things. But they, you say the f word, and I can't laugh at that. That's my family. Like they don't like the f word. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I love the F word. <laughs> we love but, it. Feel free but, to like, use it anytime you want. We're not censored yeah. here. <laughs> but like, but like comedy to me, like taking that on and being good at it, like, and I don't think, and I, I'm not a, I'm not a huge awards guy. I, I don't, I, I don't. The, the Academy doesn't hold shit for me. Like, I think it's, it's just a suck fest. But, um. We we don't give comedy its due, I, and I think part of it is because we just don't to tend not to take it seriously because it makes us giggle, and it, it's true art when it's when it's performed correctly. So like I have mad respect for people that that are good at comedy. Kevin Kevin Smith is one of my favorite. favorite oh, did so. you see that they're they're making a documentary about uh, Clerks called Shooting Clerks? Did you see that that that's coming? No, but uh-huh. that's. Well, that's Easy. coming. You gotta, <laughs> that's you gotta, something I'm excited about. You gotta pay closer attention to our Twitter feed, man. I gotta, you know, like, what am I doing? Man. Um, yeah, they just an, they just announced it, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. I know. So you mentioned you're a comedy fan, and I think you, you you mentioned Mel Brooks before. So was he is he like your big comedic hero? Is Mel Brooks? Uh, he's one Mel of Brooks them. Brooks movies, for sure. Um, Blazing Saddles is my favorite. Uh, my favorite Mel Brooks uh, movie. It, it just can't be what the original was, and it's kind of unfair to expect it to. Mm-hmm. So I, I just went in with the attitude of like, you know what? If they give me some good laughs, I'm, I'm going to be okay with it. And, mm-hmm. and they did, it, you know? And it wasn't, it wasn't even close to what the original could be, and it's unfair, I think, to try and expect it to be. And, and I think, you know, for the, the few good laughs that you do get out of it, 
just kind of enjoy it for that and and it is what it is i got to see it with my nephews they loved it and they and they had seen the original um but but they loved it they thought it was great cool so, yeah did we, you guys get a chance to see it none of us have none of seen us it. have seen it but we've all keep ranking on it <laughs> <laughs> well I, I don't rank on i really didn't give it a fair chance yet, so well, I'm, I, I'm always open really i you think know? sal's been the most harsh on I've, it. Yeah. yeah i've been pretty harsh i i'm not a fan of the cast i just uh, a lot of them i just don't think they're that funny I, i've seen them yep. there's too many comedic movies that have been released in the recent years that it's kind of like that they're like all in the same club and they're all telling the same inside joke that we don't really get and you know it's just it's not made for it's not made for the masses anymore in some regards you know they've they've lost that kind of like general humor and I, or maybe it's just me me i'm getting old I don't know. <laughs> we're, we're also pretty sure by the box office flop that it turned out to be that they're not going to make a sequel of this series so yeah. no no and and you know i'm i'm kind of okay with that because for me it's like they gave it a shot it wasn't the worst thing in the world, um, but I'm kind of glad it didn't do that well, so I don't have to try and convince myself to go to another one, honestly. <laughs> hey, you're definitely going to get a chance to hear us after we all watch Ghostbusters now. <laughs> now we all have to. We'll do another podcast on that <laughs> yeah, right. once we finally give it a fair chance. Yes. <laughs> we, we, have ri- we have ripped apart Ghostbusters in at least four or five different podcasts <laughs> in, in different ways, and now, the, now this one also. It just happens to keep yeah. coming up. Hey, one thing I did love about the first Ghostbusters was the, was the manifestation it actually taught you. Like, think of this. And what do you think? The Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Man, you know that was a deep type of thought because mm-hmm. it's like you used yeah. uh, your own inner thoughts to you know create <laughs> something against you so i thought that was a good twist yeah for something sure. good yes. and, will... and like, it's it's so quotable like it's just <laughs> there, there are so many you can just stop and think about like 10 to 15 lines root you know what i mean each movie is time sensitive exactly it has to be the right yeah. age group for each movie yeah, and I've kind of got like mapped out. Like, uh, I think I think this one will work at this age, you know, and that kind of stuff. It's kind of sad. I hope he likes movies as much as I do. I just out of curiosity, how old is he? He's four years old. <laughs> okay. I, I have a four-year-old son too, and I, I've been I've been having the um, Star Wars debate with my wife, trying to figure out when is the appropriate time to start him on that original trilogy. <laughs> hey, yeah. tell me about some of the movies that you love so much. I want to hear details. What do you really love? You say you love movies. What in particular? Which ones? <laughs> oh, man. I love to quote Mel Brooks when I'm asked about, like, my favorite movies. I tell people I love, like, 6,000 movies. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, but there are some There are some more than others, though, obviously. And I, I always think of the movies that impacted me, you know, and Ghostbusters was that first movie, really, <laughs> when I was growing up. That was like I finally was allowed to be an adult. Like mm. I, 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 I really wanted to see Ghostbusters. And my parents, I come from a pretty conservative town, okay. and and my parents are pretty like, yeah, I don't know, should we let them watch it? And there's some adult stuff in there, you know. And and they they finally came around and let me. And like, I, there there was it's hard to match you know what that was for me the first time to see an adult movie like it's not really an adult movie but nah. for me it was and like like the just the the joy and the creativity of that movie when ghostbusters came out there was nothing like that nothing you have the science fiction and you have the like ghosts and the ghouls and you have you know you have bill murray i love bill murray yeah. and and he's just so like he he can make a movie just by you know <laughs> just showing up and and making faces well, that, he whole, even... <laughs> that whole film is iconic for a reason right i mean you know it just goes back to it. so i got to ask because we've talked about it a couple times on here what did you think about the ghostbusters reboot did you watch it did you not watch it i did watch it um <laughs> and I, and i'll say this like i went in because Ghostbusters is so important to me, I went in kind of with an attitude of like, um, and there was this one in particular, his name's Nat Russo. He's an independent author. And um, he has a blog that's about how to become an independent author, basically. And I just started reading that. And, and a big part of it was, and the most important part um, that I took from it was that if you're going to start a blog and try and develop a platform, 
you have to write about things that you love. You have to have a passion behind the things that you love. And I, I got to tell you guys, I, I love movies. I love <laughs> movies. Like, there, there's nothing greater to me. I mean, I have a son now, so I kind of, I have to say that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. But I mean, like right up there, like one B behind my son is is movies. Like, it, there's no <laughs> doubt about it. It's it, it always has been. And and for those of you that have read it, like you know, like that, that's that's what our family did together. Um, so movies are just huge. And I guess one of the benefits of, of having a son now, you get to show him all the movies that you love. So you get to watch them all and have a great excuse to do it, right? <laughs> yes, and and like. He was maybe two months, it was two months in the pregnancy and I'm already thinking, okay, when can I show him E.T.? Like when, <laughs> when can, when can we watch, when can we watch, uh, the trilogy? When can we, when, when can we see, I'm probably going to have to wait on the Godfather a little bit, but not right. too long. <laughs> it, it's changing, you know, just like, uh, that's, that's one of the first things that I ever thought of when I was thinking about having a child is like how excited I was to relive some of those with him again. And we've seen E.T. We watched cool. E.T. He loves it. You know, he's four years old, loves E.T. Cool. That's awesome. I saw on the cover of your book you have uh, in, in the, the O on top, you have the little E.T. symbol going up there. So, <laughs> Hey, let me hear yeah. some of the movies that he has watched with you. Keep going. I'm curious. Uh, How about well, Goonies, maybe? One of those? He, has, or? he yeah. hasn't seen Goonies yet. He yeah. will. <laughs> um, but I, I kind of wanted to wait on Goonies until he kind of had um, a bigger group of friends. Okay. Mm. Uh, you know, so yes. that he can kind of experience like, oh, yeah, it would be really cool if my friends and I, you know. Because he, he's yeah. kind of, and that's not to say he doesn't have friends. It's just, that he, you know, he's kind of in that young stage where everybody's his friend for a little bit. And <clears throat> friendships are like four seconds long, and then it's off to someone else. Each so I kind of want to wait until he had like a group.